Hi, and welcome to Everything and the Kitchen Sink. This is episode two, and today's Tuesday, so it's Tuesday Truth Time. And basically, I'm going to talk about hot button topics and how to deal with them gracefully. And <clears throat> like I said, excuse me, like I said yesterday, I'm going to talk about foster care today because I'm a foster parent and I'm pretty passionate about it. So, um, I've had questions asked and things said to me that were a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I know people, well, usually have good intentions, but, um, I just thought I would give you some tips on, like, when you're talking to foster parents. So, um, number one question is... Do you have any of your own? Um, first of all, if the foster kids are here, are there when this is asked, kind of makes them feel like separate from the rest of the family because you're, you're like, do you have any of your own? Um, and also, even if they're not there, um, no matter how long or short they're in our care, we really consider them our own. So, um, if you want to ask, um, a, a better way would be, um, do you have any biological kids? Because then it doesn't really separate, um, you know, the foster kids out from the rest of the family without, you know, when, by essentially saying they're not our own by asking if we have any of our own. Uh, so there is that <clears throat> and then for number two I have um don't say are you unable to have kids um I got up, asked this a couple of times once by a complete stranger when I was going to get my hair cut and I almost got up and walked out because I'm I don't talk to any of my <laughs> I don't talk to my best friend about fertility issues. I'm not going to talk to a person who's cutting my hair. So, um, probably it's best just to stay away from that topic completely. It's very sensitive and uncomfortable for some people. So, just, like, I wouldn't broach it if I were you. Um, it, yes, we'll give you grace if you do, but, um, just, I would try not to talk about fertility issues whatsoever. Um, and also it kind of makes it seem like foster care or adoption was a last resort, and that's not always true. Um, some families just want to do it before they have biological kids, um, and that's fine. So then for number three, um, they're so lucky to have you. Again, while I understand the sentiment behind it and that there's good intentions, um, these kids have been through a lot. They've left their biological parents, their home, sometimes their school, their friends, their family. Um, and so really, they don't feel lucky. And, um, well, we feel blessed to have them. We also feel... Um, the pain of the trauma and the all, all that they had to do in order to get into foster care. So um, instead, you can ask questions like, um, how are they adjusting? Um, or like, do they like it at your house? Um, and probably that's a better question to ask the foster parent rather than the foster child. Um, and then, um, probably like, is there anything I can do to help? Um, and then be actually <laughs> ready to help, um, to follow through if the foster parent asks for help. Um, usually a big thing that's a need is the kids, a lot of the kids come with the clothes on their back. Um, so, um, clothes are always useful. Um, socks, underwear, um, winter jackets if it's in the winter, hats, gloves, anything like that, um, would be super duper appreciated. And then just to be there to support the foster family, they're going through huge amounts of transition, it's like having a newborn even if the kid is 11, 12, 13, 
just because it's a new kid, new situation, they don't know you, you don't know them. So just all the transitions that go with not only the child that's coming into care, but also the foster parents and any biological kids that may be involved. So just be sensitive to that and be supportive of that as much as possible. So, um, and you can absolutely see if you can like come over and meet the kids or help watch them or whatever. But also give the foster parents like a couple days, few days, um, to adjust to that, to the new child, um, and stuff like that. Um, the last thing I had, oh no, that was number three. Number four is don't say I can never do that or sanctify us. Like, put us on a pedestal because speaking from firsthand experience, <laughs> there's nothing saintly about us. Um, this is a calling and it's something that we feel like is a ministry for us, for me and my husband. Different families do it for different reasons, but putting us on a pedestal just, it, it, while you might have good intentions, it doesn't really make us feel very good. Um, so, um, just, like, uh, don't, don't put us on a pedestal, um, I, I have been very humbled by doing this, and don't say I could never do that, because I will probably try to talk you into it, for one thing, and you never know if you could do it or not until you try, so, um, and then the last thing, just a general thing, is don't ask details about the case. Because number one, um, we're not really allowed to share with you. It's actually HR um, glasses that or that's sensitive personal information. We're not supposed to share with outsiders of the situation. Also, for the kids' sake, they don't want to rehash. They don't want me rehashing in front of them. Um, and just know that they had to go through some kind of trauma, usually abuse or neglect, to get into the system. And so, um, don't ask details, just, um, if you're a praying type of person, definitely pray for them, pray for the situation, and pray for the foster parents to be able to deal with whatever it is that sent the kids into foster care. So, um, that's just my advice about that, um. We can't really share details with you anyway, so, um, so anyway, um, just, I hope that you're supportive and understanding to any foster family, parents around you, um, or adoptive, um, and just to reach out to them and, um, we all need a little extra helping hand sometimes, so, just um, keep those things in mind, and hopefully we can deal with those around us with a little bit of extra grace every day. Okay, bye everyone!